Yeah. Nope. No. Next month. Yeah. But I'm here to make a short announcement. Yeah. 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 He is involved in scouting. It's all legit. He's not here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I saw that. An OA breakout definitely has the best food. That, that's been clearly established. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come back and eat them. Yeah. Right yeah. This camera is not pointed at a person. Is it supposed to be? I said, well, Mike and Heather are on, so we can just do whatever we want. <laughs> okay, so before we, uh, we're going to be talking about ILST uh, this month, but before we have our friendly neighborhood OA adult reps who have a couple announcements for us as just, just one announcement, really. So my name is John Mudd. I'm the chapter advisor, and this is Phil Tavernier. He's our membership adult in charge. Uh, on Monday, a email was sent out to all the unit leaders, because it's not just Scoutmasters. We also have a sea ship in our, in our district and I think four crews. Um, but an email went out. It, it includes a link for, for instructions on how to schedule an election years previous. You know, there was this madhouse flurry of who to send email to, or you know, how do I do this, etc. And it's now this nice funnel that goes through this system called LodgeMaster. It's a web application, and it's it's really slick. The Lodge has used it, I think, for three years now. Um, but just in case you are a unit leader and you didn't get that email, or you think that your unit leader may not have gotten that email. Um, I did print up some QR codes that have a, a mail to on it for the email address that we use. I'll leave these with you, Greg. Um, by all means, send us an email. Uh, Phil and a youth are the ones who generally read this, this mailbox. Um, and they will be the ones who will answer all your questions. Uh, the, the OA election or a visit is really important. Um, it's a, a way of getting your more experienced uh, youth involved in another activity. And, and how I always say it is, they go off in the OA, they learn leadership skills, and they bring that back to your unit, make your unit a stronger unit. Um, sometimes scout masters think that we're, we're taking their, their youth and never giving them back, and it's totally not true. Um, so we're looking to find candidates for the OA. Our chapter, our district, the last two or three years, we've had the most people uh, elected, as well as most people who go, went through an induction. So this is a really important process, uh, both for, for the youth in your chapter, or your youth in your units, as well as our chapter in the lodge. Um, so by all means, uh, if you want to take one of these, feel free. Uh, encourage your your youth to go, to, to go up, get up and be elected, as well as to go to their induction. All right. And, and the preferred method is go through the web form that was emailed to us? Oh, yes. Okay, very much so. Okay. Uh, use that one if you have problems or questions okay. that, you know, that you feel that you're not, that you're being ignored. That's the right way to say Thank you. Great, thank you. Any so questions right now? Excellent. I look forward to seeing everything. There will be a super secret OA presentation uh, the whole time in January, so we're going to have an OA-specific uh, breakout for Scouts, BSA, in January. So It's not just the OA. It's, it's what to do with your older youth. But OA is going to be definitely a part of it. Okay. Thanks. 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 Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay, so um, when Mike and I sat down and kind of came up with uh, what we wanted to do each month, I basically jotted down things that 
I didn't feel very comfortable with and things where it's like, is this really as, as good as it gets <laughs> for, for how we can run certain things in scouts? And so, uh, yeah, I definitely view this as a round table and not me teaching or lecturing. Uh, so ILSP was high up on the list. ILST is introduction to leadership skills for troops. So this is your introductory stop for new leaders in your troop who have never led anybody and or maybe they have and are looking for some skills in leadership. But this is kind of the entry entry level leadership training. And then once they understand this stuff, or they've at least been exposed to it and maybe had a leadership position or two. Then we go off to NYLT, which is more of a, uh, it's a multi-day, overnight, uh, deep dive into it, kind of your SPL preparatory academy, if you will, or more uh, senior leadership concepts where everything that's in here is gone over again, whether they know it or not. Uh, hopefully a lot of these things are kind of second nature by then, but it's a, uh, how to take it all to the next level. And so, um, hopefully those NYLT graduates come back and are just like leadership superstars in your troop and um, one of the things that we've started to do is the people who have gone through NYLT now teach our ILST. Uh, we're not a hundred percent there, we're eighty percent. We still have some adult teaching that goes on. I'm hoping in the next six months or so, this summer I've got three that are definitely going, so that should kind of push us over the hump in terms of being able to get just entirely youth-led training with like the occasional adult interjection from the back. Um, the main reason is there's, it's quite dense, uh, there's a lot of material to go through, and if you read through the packet, it talks about, okay, you can do it in a day. We've done it both ways. We've done like a two day with an overnight. We've done um, single day ones. Um, I think we've figured out how to do it a single day and still kind of keep it entertaining for the scouts. I did bring one of the games we like to play, so we can all try that out later. Um, but I just want to kind of start the conversation with how do you, well first, does your troop do ILSC? And then second, how do you run it? Is it a single day event or is it a multi-day? Do you kind of follow the official syllabus or do you just say, uh, oh, no, throw that out the window and or maybe cherry pick one or two things and run your, your own show? So we kind of go around. Um, I don't know that we formally run the programs that uh, you're referring to. I mean, we certainly do leadership training at the start of every term to make sure that all the officers and the people in the roles know how to do you know, the respective jobs. Um, That's outside the meeting? You're, yeah, you're it's, it happens on a day outside of the meetings. Um, and then, you know, we try to send people in LT every year. Um, but beyond that, yeah, I don't know if we're cherry picking parts of it or, or all of it or none of it. Uh, overnight, been a couple of years since we've done it. Uh, have sent kids to in my LT. Um, so, I'm usually using the, the general program guide, working through it, and then interspersing a little bit of um, older youth teaching with a module or two picked up by adult leaders. Okay. You're the council worker, right? I'm the CEO. Uh, the CEO, CEO are right brand new at this time, so okay. I'm learning from okay. a distance. Great. <laughs> So our, so our troop started at, it was actually a wood badge ticket from one of our ASMs. Okay. And did it in the one day classroom mm -hmm. setting down in the basement of the church. Less than exciting. Yeah. Um, the only advantage was we were able to do PowerPoint and, and uh, have a little more uh, audiovisual uh, feedback. Opted over time to get away from the classroom setting and do it. Uh, like on a camp out, and the, uh, the younger guys or people that weren't in it, basically on the PLC, ended up um, 
doing advancement with the adults that weren't participating in it, and that kind of entertained them why the guys, and, and we did it in chunks so they could come back out and interact with the group, come back in and, and get another hour and a half uh, bite of it. Yeah. Uh, and that worked much better. Used uh, the staff lodge at Baldwin one year. We used the, there's a rentable space up at uh, Stub Stewart. Mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of nice on during the winter if you're trying to get out of the kiln. That uh, used Cooper. There's just been a, a number of venues where you can still have it indoors. Uh, it's, it's a little terrible to sit out in November, October <coughs> in a stationary position for an hour and a half. So, uh, so uh, so that worked well. I like your idea more of the the youth who did NYLT being involved in the teaching. That's something that uh, was marginally done. It, it, I think it's it's been hard to like get that process going where it's like, oh, it's a cool thing for now. I'm I'm the big hit like presenting like getting that. Uh, Culture in green has been slow going <laughs> so far, but, but um, yeah, we actually had a one of the adults' um, parents was a trainer for one of the big uh, retailers in mm -hmm. the Northwest. So uh, his job was team building and yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, and, and it was like, yeah, this looks really familiar. So we yeah. kind of put him as point person. Uh, to do that, so PowerPoint first. Uh, well, we didn't have PowerPoint. We we had no power. <laughs> I just said point few. <laughs> What's the answer? Whether it's this or or Web Edge or NYLT, there's a lot of uh, familiarity with other corporate training programs that people might be familiar in one. Then all of a sudden, like, oh yeah, it's this what? you know different name but exact same idea. Right. So, around the back. Yeah. So do, does your tribute I will see you yeah. same okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're a late troop, so and I am just just became a scoutmaster, so I'm not sure exactly how it's been done in the past, mm -hmm. but um, I doubt it's been a program. Progress. Yeah, I, I don't want to say that this is the greatest thing ever, by the way, because there there are parts in here which I think are really bad <laughs> or bad ideas. There's there's a there's one part where there's a thing where you put a bunch of candy out on the table and let say everyone everyone can have one and you know the exact number and then you find out like did anybody and you count at the end and count if anybody taken two. So like this is like two hours later with it sitting on the table and then you read. The kids, I was like, no, I, I don't like this yeah. whole <laughs> this whole concept at all. But it's kind of like their, their trustworthiness. Uh, and it's like I think we could do trustworthy a little better <laughs> than what they're presenting. So, um, yep. Uh, Marty Pearson with one six two. Mike Coles is true. So yeah, I don't know what he said that we do, but <laughs> uh, and from my experience, what I remember, so. <laughs> what I remember, we do it as a single day. We used to try to do it within the two to three weeks after the election as soon as possible. Yeah, um, sure. and it's a one day thing. Usually at the Scott Masters house. And uh, last year, a lot of our older youth was otherwise engaged, um, and we called on some of. Uh, Former people that were in the area, mm -hmm. and they did that. I know they have some pre recorded things as well, <clears throat> but it's, so it's more electronic like, videos and slide scrolls and things like that. My trip before I took over, we had the 1980s ILST video. Has anybody seen that one with the? Yeah, they're all in the red windbreakers, and some kid's got this giant boom box he's stuffing into, that, <laughs> and it's like, hold on there, Fred. Like, and then, yeah. And they, they build this brid, wood bridge over this giant chasm. So it's just like things that would not be allowed in Scouts today. <laughs> it's like it's half the video, right? But uh, it's like the kids are just, you know, like passing out of the chair as they're watching these sections of videos. It's like, okay, we need to 
spruce it up. We've, we've been doing it outdoors or at um, Days Camp Smith or where we can get back outdoors or under some car. Just like they need to like get, go get energy out <laughs> for, for 10 or 15 minutes and then kind of come back, recharge or have some snacks and drinks, go run around, play some games, come back in and just, so we, because if it's just six hours straight, they're gonna be zombies and not really absorb anything. Um, this past time we actually had one of our uh, Eagles who was actually on NYLT staff and he helped teach and they were riveted, and he was 19 and they were riveted to his presentation. So I think definitely, at least, in, in my trip, I'm going to be leaning on those older youth who have gone through either that or the OA equivalent to like kind of come back and because they're going to listen to them more than they listen to any adult, right? It's just kind of the, the nature of things. Uh, I was going to go through and just kind of familiarize people have not seen this at all. This is all free download, by the way. All these training programs are down a little on the Scout websites. Um, the first module is just unit organization. Like you ask, like, well, who runs the troop? It's like, well, the scoutmaster is like, you know, does the scoutmaster? And you like, then they, because a lot of the younger kids, you know, I showed up here from Weeblos and I had some fun time at camping. All of a sudden, I'm a patrol leader and I don't know what the heck's going on. And yeah, it's like, no, like you, the youth, you're the ones picking the trips. You're the ones, and you know, I'm here to make sure everybody comes back in one piece or you know, as close to one piece as possible. So um, the unit organization is interesting, and then just also you'll find kids who have begged for a particular role, and they want, you know, oh, I really want to be quartermaster, and it's like the most disorganized kid in the world is like, do you know what a quartermaster does? They, they just like the name or the patch or whatever, <laughs> so you, kind of, you have to go, go through some of those things, but um, we actually run our... Yeah. When we go through our planning, we just schedule our elections, which are twice a year, and we have the uh, tr leadership training the Saturday right after that. Um, and I think we kind of locked in on Monday. We did do a two-day one, which was fun, but it was just a lot of effort by the adults because we actually, that's one of the, that is only the other trip that we do where the adults actually cook. Uh, we let, you know, usually youth are doing all the cooking, but we wanted them to be totally focused on the training and everything. So, um, yes, yeah, so a unit organization, there's a lot of uh, different kind of, it talks about like skills within your patrol. So, we, one of the things our kids like doing is the disability obstacle course where you have like a deck of cards and uh, if you have one suit, you can't talk, another person doesn't have. Uh, can't use their arms, uh, another can't uh, see, and another doesn't have use of their legs. So they have to go through this obstacle course that the trainers get to build with like ropes and go over and under stuff and figure out how to, and usually it's like some strong kid picks up two kids and is, and you know, the strong kid can't talk and he's running through it. It's like, well, what about <laughs> the rest of them? And yeah, they start to kind of, this is like the first game where, you know, maybe not charging in and maybe discussing a plan might be useful <laughs> and they, they start to come back to more things. Um, we also do... Um, so back, back to that the activity, it sounds like empathy yes. is useful. one of the uh, values or, mm -hmm. uh, that you discover by practicing, by right. doing that activity. Well, it's like, yeah, the, the guy who can't talk, like, how do you think he feels being abandoned back there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, there's a lot of on-the-fly teaching points. So I think that's where, that's where the adults can kind of step back with the trainers as this is going on. It's like, hey, maybe this is something you can you know, poke, on, you know, poke at and so mm -hmm. kind of direct it. That's a good point. Uh, another big highlight is the balloon game, which we always have our senior patrol leader and everyone writes something that the youth have to run in the troop and then you you throw one thing at the senior patrol leader you have to keep it in the air then you throw another so at a certain point there's too many balloons where you can't keep it in the air it's like well what do you need to do it's like <coughs> maybe a friend can help me and so then they realize like delegation is <laughs> is critical and to the point where 
uh, we even get it, we, we force the senior patrol leader to delegate everything. So, so it's like, hey, you're, you know, now your job is not to physically tap the balloon in the air, it's to make sure everybody's balloons are doing okay. Are there any problems like, oh, he's got three balloons, he's got one, let me get this one over here. And we actually use that as a touch point throughout the year when the kid's struggling, like, especially you go to Camp Reed, kids in the trailer trying, it's like, this is not where the leader should be. Where should the leader be right now? And, you know, where's your balloons? <laughs> and the, oh, and, and they kind of go off. Um, so on that, on that category, just uh, unit organization and um, understanding kind of structure and delegation, what do you guys like to do in your troops and tra when you go through the training? Yeah, is, it game, is it game based? Is it PowerPoint slides? Is it uh, testimonials from older scouts? Or? We've historically stayed completely away from anything digital. Yeah. It's all, it's all experience, and so yeah, it's a little bit of discussion and then do experiences like you're talking about. Um, did not, everybody can go to the ILSD camp out, we don't limit it to just the oh, okay. older leadership. We let, we have historically let the, even the younger ones go. They gotta start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, they may not be even that. Shortly, yeah, right? But that gives them the opportunity. And then sometimes in a year or two, the next thing you know, they want to teach one of the modules. I want to do the balloons, so I want to do the organs, or I want to do, you know, the handshake game, or, right? And they start getting new interest, and they want to teach one of the modules. So that's why we've always opened up to their entire. And I think some of your points, Jim, like about the where, right? We use. Um, yeah, no, I get it. The one out there on your way to Vernon. Yeah, yeah. Too far to Sub Stewart and rent the little, yeah. the little lodge area. That's been really great because we've used the walk in tent sites and then used the uh, presented space. That's been good for an overnight one. Go for your presenters. Yeah, to be able because then you're well weather controlled, right? Even if it rains, you can get inside and do the classes in there. And there's lots of places that Sub Stewart's burn off steam, right? With hiking trails. Camp Smith has worked good in the past too because it's if you're at the Hobbit Houses or if you're at the main lodge. Uh, Although they block the generator, so unless you know somebody who knows somebody, you're not going to be able to. You need to bring your own power source for the big lodge now. So that's okay, that's a good one. As a heads up. But, but that, that's, um, those, are, those have been good venues. So all the youth and experiential. Just I, I think lecturing is the easiest way to lose them. Right? Yeah, because they they want to do stuff, and then then again, the scouts to look at a screen for another two hours or six hours. Unless <coughs> it's their cell phone. That's right. Unless <laughs> it's their cell phone. Okay. <laughs> and we do the same thing you do too. We talked about let the let the adults cook yeah. that weekend, so the youth can focus on their training time. They're not worried about who's doing KP or being excluded or something. Right. And we use that sometimes as an opportunity. Also to show them that there are more things than spaghetti, pancakes. <laughs> yes, yeah. As a, as a menu item, we, we sometimes have tried to open up the menu a little bit on those campouts and like, wow, we can eat like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's like, uh, yeah, it took me 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 I know a couple things that kind of helped keep the kids involved. We had the little, the little mini Halloween candies. And you know how you ask a question and, and you have a room that just kind of looks at you? <laughs> but, so if it's you like, answer, you get but if you yeah, it, and the first time you throw it throw the kid a candy get the answer, it's like ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, everybody wants to you know, throw out an answer. So uh, and then once you get the that lubricated then you can stop with the candy. I'll bring the candies next time, message received. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not for here. I wasn't saying anything. Here. <laughs> but I, I think one of the things that our unit kind of focused on was both servant leadership and the patrol method. And it's, uh, we were really heavy on patrol method. Um, the, the troop isn't made of patrols, the, the patrols make the troop. Yeah. And that 
a lot of people miss that distinction. That the patrol leaders come to the PLC and, and direct, it's under the leadership of the senior patrol leader to MC the meeting. The decisions are being made by the patrol leaders and communication back and forth is, is such a critical part. And so we're really stressing that as a patrol leader, you're their representative, but in order to represent them, you also have to go back to the patrol and tell them what was talked about and what was decided and take their ideas to the PLC and then it's kind of a, a, a conduit to uh, decide where you're going to go and what you're going to do to get uh, camp outs or whatever. So. If we, uh, my troop, uh, I kind of inherited this concept of trip leader, which I'm not overly fond of. Uh, I'd much rather the senior patrol leader actually be the trip leader on the trips and be running the trips. <coughs> and yes, cert, like summer camp and Camp Marie are kind of mandatory that the senior patrol leader is there and the trip leader, but there's, it. it's kind of a pros and cons. It exposes some youth to leadership challenges early on, where okay, I was, I was just running this bike trip and now all of a sudden, the fire won't start and everybody's hungry and you know I'm, I'm 12 <laughs> so it's kind of a there, there's good things from from that aspect in terms of uh, early challenges but it's also uh, it seems like at least for me there's a lot of times where my elected leaders are just kind of opting in on the trips that are easy and not necessarily there when their patrol needs them kind of thing so I've been kind of been waffling on that uh, in my trip about how I want to really lean on that in terms of uh, yeah. get you know getting the getting those youth to actually show up on trips. So. Um, one thing I'll mention is if you do the course from this from the book, uh, the first module takes forever, and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, it's like. Lunchtime, we haven't even gotten through module one, like panic. Don't panic. Module one's like easily half the course. Like module three is 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's super fast. And so module one, it takes a while to get the ball rolling with, with youth. And there's a lot of games, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of, especially if you're inviting all your leaders, because it's okay, what does the OA rep do? And what does the quartermaster do? And what does it? it and just, oh my gosh, it just goes on forever, right? So it's, and you need the breaks in there to break it up. So the, the first module does take a while. Um, just, uh, I wouldn't overly panic it. So if you want to, first time trying to do this and you're going by the book, uh, I, I wouldn't panic if <laughs> module one's not done in time. Uh, second module is like tools of leadership, which is, uh, you know, our good friend, the edge method, and uh, just, the telephone game, like communication, so verbal communication and written communication, like maybe your patrol would like to get an email from you about the upcoming camp out and what's, you know, what's happening. And um, one thing that I'm, I think we maybe finally have resolved now in my troop is we've got some reliable leadership that is sending out emails. This is what we're doing at the troop meeting here's the jobs for the coming troop meeting, and not just, okay, we planned it in PLC and everybody's supposed to remember it, but our senior patrol leader or his delegate is actually sending out the reminders and talking with the mayor badge counselors, making sure the adult can, is gonna be there, and yeah, all of those kinds of things, because one of the other shocking things in youth is, you know, adults aren't perfect, you know, that this might, this might, Last this, might <laughs> this might be a shock, but it's, you know, they're, they're adults who are supposed to be doing a merit badge and they completely forgot about it, right? So, so you need to you know, talk to them and know what's going on. Um, one, uh, so we did like a telephone game, which they always intentionally sabotage and have fun with, but it, it kind of gets the point across that, you know, me telling Gordon to go tell somebody to tell somebody else, like it's probably not gonna work. Like it's it just in terms of, there's too many steps in the chain and it, the messages are gonna be received. And we usually have like, uh, you know, stories about, yeah, well, you know, at summer camp where the head of the camp told our, our camp host and the camp host came and told me and then I told you, what you heard is probably not what came out of the, 
<laughs> yeah, the camp uh, camp leader's mouth, right? So, um, and yeah, so again, this is also great where the older scouts have a lot of fun stories, like, oh, remember when so and so did? And the kids love telling scout stories, right? So once you get them in that that mode, then it's a uh, really good for learning. Um, so I did have a game, but I wanted to maybe talk a little bit before. Um, what kind of ways do you guys te teach like the different tools of leadership in, in that section? Is it, whether it's communication or teaching methods, like refreshing them about edge method, or um, like is it, do you have any fun games that you like to teach them about with the, because getting up there and lecturing will definitely, you got about three to four minutes before they pass out. <laughs> So we did a game where the old colored blocks from your childhood mm -hmm. and we laid out a pattern on the table and then there were blocks at each table inside and the patrol leader had to come out and look at the assembled this is what you're supposed to recreate okay and then from memory I'll come back in come back in and direct his team at that table oh, verbally. to to create it and it and this was laying flat, and one of the patrols actually was building it vertically, thinking <laughs> that's, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, well, didn't expect that, but I don't know how you got from there to that, but, uh, but it was that, you know, how, how do you convey what I saw, what I heard to a group and, and actually assemble something from a pile of blocks. I'm jotting that one down. Uh, is does anyone have a good source of those kinds of like I've got scout skill games like I find a lot of those like oh you need some game that uses the square lashing or the bowling or whatever there there's plenty of those resources but has anyone found games for more soft like the leadership soft skills and resources so I cheated and used the internet yeah you know like is a million troop or councils that put up their own version of ILST mm -hmm. and I kind of went through and picked modules and information from different ones the last time I So you specifically it. looked at their ILST? Yeah, because it, it's funny because it's like yeah, there's the national standard. Well, here's here's Mountain uh, Council's yeah, right. <laughs> ILST, yeah. right? And you go over to Florida and, oh wait, there's another ILST. This doesn't look identical, but we're going through this. And kind of stealing some good ideas out of each one of those that sounded good that was a place to get some of those i think you talk about the communication um i don't know what the official name is it but when you all stand in a circle and then you just grab somebody's hand across there oh and untie the knot and try to untie that create whatever that yeah. crazy thing is and then using that as an example because you'll get like eight people in a circle and seven of them want to tell the others what to do yeah. right <laughs> and then coaching them to the moment of hey pick one person to untie the knot give directions yeah right and then all of a sudden they're like oh that's why we have an spl yeah. right one guy's <laughs> giving directions because the seven of us do it we don't get anything done right everybody gets frustrated right so you know using those games but i think that that experience-based learning where you more games you can get them involved in to work through these different examples, less lecture, more games, yeah. um, and then feed them, with the fed. Yeah, we do have that discussion on the, uh, why aren't there two senior patrol leaders, or three, right? Yeah, it's like, well, wouldn't it make it easier to get that job done? And like, then there's usually a heated argument, then we play that game, and then like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and we don't currently have um, a female troop, mm -hmm. right? We had, we were, we used to have that and it was interesting to see because it was like okay well, which trip are you going on i don't want to do what the the guys are doing i want to go on the, the girls trip okay and we have to get a cadre together mm -hmm. and guess who's in charge of the girls trip the girls that scale yeah right so it gave them that opportunity to see one of the female scouts in the leadership position versus always being the ma male and the male group right mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was something we coached on them, right? That, you know, you don't know who your boss is going to be ever, right? So having that ability to listen to the, the girls lead a particular outing 
And sometimes the girls had better outings, so we a bunch of us would go on the one day. It's like that that's a terrible outing. We want to go on that one. So you know, three quarters of the troop would go and the, the girls selected one. And maybe the other ones didn't go or they just have for a small outing for the, the yeah. girls' troop. Well, it's also good to see, like, oh, they went over, that sounded like a fun trip. Why aren't we doing that? It's like, why aren't you doing that? Because <laughs> SPL didn't talk about it. Yes. it get figured out. It's this thing called PLC. Where, yeah. Um, okay, I did bring a game. For, this is a, I don't think it'll be a, but I use you as a helper. Yeah. So, one, two, three, four, five here, and five here. And what we're going to do is face each other with our fingers and bounce the stick. So I have a person here, 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 and another one here. And you just have to lower the stick to the ground without anyone getting their finger off the pole. So line up and I'll, it makes more sense. I don't think I've done this one. It's called the Helium Stick. Where's the Helium Stick? It's a song. See, look, it's already rising. <laughs> so you have to lower it to the ground without anybody, uh, without dropping, without it. anybody's finger coming off of the stick. Oh no, no so finger on top. <laughs> and without, and without it's cheating. Always going. You gotta have the <laughs> right. Let's just slowly <laughs> lower so, your so you can just like kind of adjust the pace if you feel like your side is so going yeah, down. Right, right, just have the fingers underneath, and without your fingers, no one's fingers coming off. You have to lower it to the ground. I'm not going to know And if you're, if you're old, maybe like yeah. down to your waist is probably pretty good because <laughs> you'll find like, so get past the yeah, the stick goes oh. up. Okay. Good call. Yeah. All right. So, okay. you seem to be doing such a great job <laughs> in your central okay. position, so I can probably get down to my knees. Slowly lower. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll say you. You guys are doing a lot better than the young scouts usually do. So, oh no, I've seen a fly off in the in the direction. You're right. It's yeah, right. When we use like broom handles. Yeah, I'm running out of back. Okay, that's good. Bend your knee. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah those are those are just there for looks. Okay. You, usually, what happens is that they're all like, "Oh, I'm lowering it," and then, then everybody's like, kind of, yeah. And it it just <laughs> literally, I'll be like pushing down. It's like everybody relax, and then. Oh, okay, here we go again. And it's usually four or five times before they finally someone's like, everyone be quiet and like let's listen to so and so. And then, then it's you know, they just like slowly talk it down and it kind of works out. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's work. Sensation, right? You're trying to keep the tension on, but you know, yeah. not be the person pushing it through the roof. Because everybody wants to make sure just the pressure to keep your finger on it will. If everybody's in that, right? And especially this size pole or longer is what you need. Like a short one is easier, but if you've got a bunch of people, then it's the more people. Yeah, makes it, it, it just really goes up. Yeah. Well, you've got to trust that other people are lowering their fingers too. Right. You, you can't just think, yeah. oh, if I lower them, they're gonna they're gonna keep it up, and I'm gonna be yeah. That that doesn't work. You, you have to work together. And if everybody's doing their part to get a little lower. Right. Not too bad. So, sometimes it's a leader. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. This seems like weekend two a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Games? Fun? Game what? Day, day six, was it? <laughs> ILSP is a lot more sleeping, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we use this one for kind of that if one person is kind of directing, then it tends to work out. Where um, I was telling them, like, there's times I've had to like, just be pushing down, like just everyone relax, and just immediately whoop, because they're just, if everybody's just pushing slightly on it, it's just gonna go up, and it's just trusting, like do not raise my hands, and then, and having, yeah, you know, so it's, uh, we like doing that one, and uh, that one and the telephone game, I think are a lot of fun, and then the, uh, the in the earlier section, the. Kind of obstacle course, where with the different you know, can't talk or no legs or no arms, because then the scouts who come back they get to design the obstacle course, and of course they're going <laughs> to try and make it. So I usually have to dial it back a little bit. It's like, well, not over the spike pit. You know? <laughs> so it's absolutely a little more All right, great. Um, and I think especially the tools of leadership. 
if, if I was going to pick the section for if you have limited youth educators, that tools of leadership is best with the youth teaching it because then telling them about edge and like why it works well and uh, there's a lot of good personal anecdotes and things where it's like the first section what does a scoutmaster do and what does senior patrol do? Yeah. it's nice to have a youth teach it it could be an adult but the tools of leadership is what like here's what they came for and to really understand the nuts and bolts of like the different skills because that's the stuff that you're going to refer back to in two months when they're patrol leader and they're running around it's like don't you need to have your menu plan for you know, two weekends from you know so, so you grab us to go meal shopping oh yeah we you know, we wrote that it's like well show me the menu and it's just just you know three or four pieces of food on a piece breakfast, of paper so lunch just like, well, this is not, breakfast no lunch. you don't have breakfast lunch <laughs> there it's just you know hot dog egg ramen or something and it's like, this, you know, this is not a menu <laughs> It's like, is your grub master? Because it's always, you know, somebody forgot the ketchup or whatever. It's like, well, was it on the list? It wasn't on the list, right? So. No butter for pancakes, no syrup for pancakes, mm -hmm. no peanut, nothing to put on the toast. One, and then the one thing that I, I forgot to mention, like the first module, there's a section where they craft their vision statement, which is kind of a wood badgy light <laughs> kind of thing where it's, what do you want to do it we do six month stints for our leaders what do you want to do in your six months in this role so first of all they learn what their role is supposed to do and then what do you want to do and and it, you know have fun with my patrol fine well just give me the specifics of what have fun means and that's perfectly fine as a goal or i want to uh um you know we had one senior patrol leader he wanted the it to be less insular, like less, you know, this patrol's over here, that patrol's over there, and more uh, interaction during the trips, like that was his goal, and so they all, and they all have their own spin on it, and I usually, you know, it's like, uh, the goals are private, except I say, well, the senior patrol leader, for your speech to become senior patrol leader, you've hopefully already outlined <laughs> your goals in that speech, so maybe we'll reiterate or share some of the things that you're hoping to do, and then when you get to module three, it's kind of revisiting that vision. It's like, now that we have these tools, what are you going to, you know, how can those be applied to getting this vision done, right? So, um, and obviously a quartermaster's vision will be different than a patrol leader's vision will be different than a OI rep. So, um, but it's, it, that's one thing that uh, we've struggled with so far in the troop, in my troop at least about individual goal setting like you've always got a couple of those kids are just real what go-getters and they're you know they're nagging the merit badge counselor every meeting for you know working on merit badges and just like crushing all the advancement stuff and um where others are having, having a great time which is perfect but it's just kind of uh you know you're not quite clear what their goals are and so i i did steal an idea um i think uh, joe is to so it was like they come up with the goals in their troop uh, at each quarter of honor and they track it and I said oh I'm definitely stealing that because uh, yeah I just want to know like where where their minds at if their goal is to have fun in scouts great I will make sure that we're on track for that if their goal is they want to become Eagle Scout great let's focus on that and um, that will I think help direct you know, at least my guidance of the youth. So this is also a good time to kind of revisit those goals for the kids who want to be in a leader role. That was their goal to become that leader. And now why why did you want that leader? Maybe it's, oh, it's I need it for a rank. Okay, well, you know, what are what are we hoping to get out of this beyond that, right? Versus instead of a chore, you know, how <laughs> how can we make this and like why do we pick librarian over you know something else? And I, I make it clear that the, the easy roles are not going to be easy, right? The, you know, we have our, our librarians in charge of checking and then checking on all troop gear in every meeting, which is a pretty hefty task. Like they've got to be there and they've got to make sure it all gets put back and organized. And it's, it's probably more work than the quartermaster. Like the quartermaster is once a month, it's bigger gear, but the librarian is there all the time. 
So um, we, you know, we. It used to be the librarian is yeah I'm a librarian and you know I I look at the merit badge pamphlets that sit on the shelf and that's it you know <laughs> so we're I, so, I alphabetize them yeah right or you know maybe one one hour during the entire six months I'll make sure I'll look at what is checked out and send out an email I'll say no 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 we're, we need to escalate a little bit um, one thing that the in the pamphlet, they have this the rock game or the potato game. If you've ever played any, uh, like you go get a whole bunch of rocks or marbles that all look about the same, and everyone gets one, and they have to study it and determine what makes it special. And then you have them throw it all back in a bag and mix it up, and then everyone has to find their their rock or their potato. And we this last time we did a potato, and it was. A very solemn ceremony of handing out these potatoes like all our scouts have like yeah you know, they decide they want to get some like bathrobe kind of hood things and like <laughs> this solemn presentation <laughs> of potato and and no one the younger kids don't know what they're going to get so they're like oh I've been waiting for this this is like the big moment and it's you know it's like you know your potato and <laughs> just, <laughs> just you know mass confusion right so um, they, they it, that one sounds dumb but the Kids have fun with it. Um, so, what? How do you guys? Because module three is kind of like putting it all together. Like you've taught them the tools. Like, what are uh, any good games or discussions that that your troops have to kind of put all the pieces together? Because I mean, for for us, it's that kind of revisiting that vision statement and the, the potato, <laughs> the potato presentation are the, the kind of the cornerstones of, the, of that module for us. I don't know if it's putting it together, but I know during our ours they do a Jeopardy game mm -hmm. and recalling different stuff, right? So. Okay, so just like whatever they've been talking about. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Points are based on the patrols that are there, so and they do, and then you know, see which patrol is paying most attention. Again. So, right. so. Now, do you have? Um, it sounds like is it the whole patrol shows up, or is it the assistant patrol leader, patrol leader only, or is it anyone who wants to come? It's anybody. It's open to the whole troop. Okay. So, yeah. I think that's one thing I found interesting is that some troops it's open to everybody, and then others it's kind of limited to leaders and maybe some others might be limited explicitly to senior patrol leader, patrol leader only. Um, well, our, our unit had done that work only if you were on the PLC, basically. And we found that a lot of people were getting elected not having a clue as to what happened at a PLC or what that leadership position might <coughs> Entail. So, going through the introduction course a couple of times even um, helped them before they go, ooh, ooh, I want to be the quartermaster. It's like you do understand what that means, right? <laughs> you know, and, and most of the positions like that are like with scoutmaster approval, according yeah. to the book. <laughs> and it's like, are you sure? I, I, I've had some discussions about. Um, you know, you lose three things every camp out. <laughs> now you're in charge of all the troop gear. Is this the best? <laughs> is, is this, this the best batch? Now, if it's something that you're trying to get better at, and you think we're fine, then we'll put two adults <laughs> in there to mentor you or whatever, and we'll we'll work on it. But you know, know that this is not a <laughs> this is you know, we're going to be building our strength in this area. So that's a good thing you said. The mentor you typically have adults mentoring each. Uh, youth position mm -hmm. yes we not ex we don't have an explicit like I'm helping this patrol leader but more we have one of my ASM's focus is just leadership in general and she actually organizes and and runs this like I attend and help out but it, it's kind of her thing um, but also just in PLC we might have a little leadership minute uh, or take some youth aside about, you know, oh, I heard this happen, they camp out, 
you know, how do you think that went, and you know, those kind of discussions. Uh, and then we have uh, how it's kind of fallen recently is we have two ASPLs recently, and one is in charge of merit badge program, one's in charge of TTFC, although it, when, when we have a troop guide, that's kind of that, that position is the TTFC lead, and then um, we have a ASM in charge of T TTFC, another ASM kind of in charge of merit badge program. They just kind of keep an eye on things and make sure are the use emailing people. A TFC, is that, is that trail to first class? Trail to first class, yeah. That's TTFC. an acronym. Yeah. Oh, Don't yeah. be confused with the talk for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we kind of did a, a little more formal because we were very patrol uh, method oriented. So a assistant scoutmaster mentored a specific, mm -hmm. actually the whole patrol. Okay. And it was because the assistant patrol leader often ended up being in charge on a camp out uh, when somebody had a conflict or whatever. But it, and so it was that assistant scoutmaster kind of became the, the collective patrol's go to person. And then uh, I, as scoutmaster, worked with the senior patrol leader and mentored him and, and the assistant senior patrol leader just in. In the hierarchy, of, mm -hmm. you know, you're we're kind of comparable in the you know the leadership of you know of the adults and, and the leadership of the youth and and mentoring them on just how to make the whole unit work and, and MC a, a meeting and why having an entire meeting of uh, 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 the shark attack game. Sharks and minnows, yes, and and having the the debrief after the meeting, saying, so how do we end up with 45 minutes of sharks and minnows? And it's like, oh, well, we kind of forgot to plan it. <laughs> okay, let's, you know. There was I think one of the roundtables. One of the leaders talking about they had music night where all the kids brought their instruments, <laughs> just like. Epic mayhem <laughs> for an hour and a half, but the kids like favorite favorite meeting of the year, right? Just gets running around, blaring away on trumpets and saxophones. So, um, uh, okay, the uh, I usually like to end it because I've been, I've, I have the guide, but then I've got a lot of like post-it notes and things that we jotted down. Um, there's a lot of uh, other games that come in this packet, by the way, um, that you can peruse. The, the last thing that we do is we hold our first PLC at the end because instead of talking about what a P we talk about what a PLC is and how it runs for a little bit of time, hopefully the senior patrol leader has attended PLCs in the past in some other role and not just randomly shot to the top, you know, and hopefully they've been a patrol leader, uh, but the uh, we'll we'll run our actual first PLC just to kind of get get the ball rolling because um, we had a couple you know, post COVID. There was definitely a rocky patch about they really didn't know what they're supposed to be planning, and so there's there's actual templates out there where it's like beginner, ski slope, intermediate, expert, and we're slightly larger troops, so we can support definitely two if not three things at once and it's like okay well you have new all the new kids are working trail first class what are we actually working on specifically who's going to train it and so you can kind of the template helps them structure a little bit and then once they're comfortable with it it's like, okay well it's your troop we don't have to follow this at all we're not going to play games all night <laughs> but if we're uh you know, you're feel free to adjust uh, you know how we want so Running through that PLC, then it, it does two things. First, they're they're kind of ready to get out of there, so there's not a lot of goofing off at PLC. So it's a pretty efficient PLC as things go, and then also kind of just locks in the uh, a lot of the concepts about who's supposed to do what. You know, it's like you as a patrol leader should come to PLC and know what your patrol needs, right? Whether it, if it's for advancement or Hey, we really want to do some more camping, or we want to, uh, 
you know, we heard about this cool activity and want to do it, uh, just kind of going through those uh, those different options. Like that, that's been probably the hardest part is our senior patrol leader shows up organized and then the patrol leaders or troop guide are just, oh, I guess we work on merit badges. Like, well, let's, let's come a little more prepared next time and you know, send out a mail or a TikTok or whatever for your buddies and figure out what you want. So, um, does anyone else do PLC at the at the end or like a mock PLC? A mock PLC. Yeah. They have it. National has some videos that accompany this material, like the mock PLC, which, um, yeah, I've never seen it run that smoothly. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, because we did it on the camp out, we actually send them back to their patrol mm -hmm. and come back with. We, we have like three things they need to discuss and brainstorm on so that they can come back to the PLC with. That's the, a really good idea. The feedback yeah. from the patrol and, and kind of reinforce, this is why you have patrol meetings. This is why you talk to each other on the camp out because the PLC is following the camp out at our unit. And so it, a lot of the discussion happens during the camp out of, you know, with the patrol mm -hmm. as they are discovering, you know, things they would have liked to have done if they thought about it instead of, you know, sitting around staring at each other or the same old, same old uh, grilled cheese sandwich for yeah. lunch right. and dinner and probably breakfast. So. <laughs> grilled cheese. You know, if you put a some slice of ham. That's some expensive KP there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you put a slice of ham on it, it's gourmet and you can have it for dinner. Yeah, yeah. I think in the past having used um, come in Friday night just to get camp set up, mm -hmm. beat them Saturday morning, do the activity in the training through Saturday, and then they camp again Saturday night. There's a lot of discussion that happens around right. the campfire. And I think that kind of bookends it with two camping experiences, right? Yeah. Friday night and Saturday night, and then get Sunday morning, have a nice breakfast, and everybody gets home. I will say the Camp Smith was definitely good bonding. It was just the leaders, and it was a really good bonding moment for because they they all kind of packed into one of the Hobbit huts and had like two to three hours of you know, conversations and fun and kind of you know, kind of all clicked together. So that was uh, so it's definitely positives with the overnights. It's just it is extra effort. Is how much is the uh, Buildings that stub cost. It's been a few years. I mean, it used to only be like fifty bucks for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. It's still is. There's two buildings yeah. though. I think one of them is more expensive than this one. Is cheaper. So we just did our uh, camp giving camp out there okay. in November. It was uh, right around hundred dollars for the Cal Creek Post. Okay. That's absurd. But I talked to the ranger there, and he is just freshly transported from another state park. Mm -hmm. And if we are doing youth training or any kind of nonprofit training stuff. He didn't have the specific information, but I'm going to get in touch with him when he needs help. Mm -hmm. email and stuff. We can rent those things for next to nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so like, like 10, 15 bucks instead of like 100. Yeah. Um, if, if we're doing legit training and stuff, not that you'll have your family barbecue there. It's <laughs> for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> you know. That, that, that. that may be his own personal role. We, we used to do that at Silver Falls. Mm -hmm. For the big lodge, and if we did a service project, we got a screaming deal, and they right. threw in a cord of wood for free. And mm -hmm. we were there one time, and the ranger came up, really quite embarrassed. He said, "There is an auditor from the state in camp yeah. on property." He goes, "I have to collect all the money." Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 he, the auditor, came by to see what who was in the in the you know the lodge and. And it was like, okay, well, everybody get out your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hat. That's right, sweet. So we... Well, I'll we'll get some sound information. Yeah. yeah. I think I think the I think the directors of the park have a certain amount of leeway. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> like we paid full freight for the building, but he threw threw in the wood for free. Right. But, 
any other parting thoughts or comments from folks? All right. So January is OA will be an OA centric. Uh, a uh, John will be coming in to teach us about what OA does, and uh, I I was asked for the topic name. I said help OAs stealing our kids, <laughs> and so you know he'll come in and address that, and also just kind of talk about. Um, you know, opportunities as as your youth get older in the troop and kind of have a pretty firm handle on the scouting thing like how can we ratchet it up a little bit for them so uh, so that's coming up in January and then uh, over the holidays is kind of our district planning where Mike Heather and Dave and I will probably sit together and come up with a topic so one of them I know is trailer show and tell and trailer trailer talk in general um, like how do you delicately ask a parent if they actually know how to back up a trailer? <laughs> Those kinds of topics. So that one's definitely on the on the list as well. Uh, but if you've got specific topics you'd like to add, uh, just pay me. And I'll, uh, how about trailer show and tell? How have you tricked out your unit? Well, that's what we're going to do. Is it's going to be. Some of this could be a little trailer talk, but then if people want to bring their trailer and you know show off or uh, you know kind of we did this or we did that, because at least in my troop there's a very heated debate about shelving or no shelving. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got this higher fair thing so we don't bang our heads, and the first thing we want to do is put shelves in. Put shelves in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the funniest ones I ever saw was it was a big enough trailer that had the side door and the and the mm -hmm. back doors, and they did. The, the shelving unit around on the side door. and and coincidentally they looked a lot like the bunks at the Adirondacks at Meriwether <laughs> <laughs> and they thought this was a great idea uh, they had little ventilators on the roof and, and so the scoutmaster and the assistant scoutmasters would camp in the trailer instead of in the tent until somebody thought it would be funny, you know where the lock goes? All you have to do is put a twig. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, you. <laughs> so, since we've got you all pinned down here, there's a couple things coming up district-wide, right, or council-wide. So, Jim, did you want to announce? Well, well I'm, I'm here in an official capacity as a campery official. <laughs> <laughs> What era? I have no <laughs> idea where this, <laughs> where this hat how, came from. How, no, I know where it came from. It, Jack found it someplace. Oh, that that makes sense. Yeah. So Campery is uh, the first weekend of May, uh, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Uh, it's going to be out at Benneke Creek. Uh, we've connected with the uh, folks out at the Health Preserve again. And so starting to get planning going underway. Um, would love to have some adult volunteers to help with the planning because right now it's uh, me and John uh, or <laughs> and Rob who did program thinks he might have a conflict he's trying to nail down his employer on now when was I going to that conference uh, to know whether he's available uh, with, with program but um, program can be done by one person I've done it Rob did it last last year and Having more people in that position would make the job considerably easier. There were a lot of things that could have been done better, um, and uh, it was just trying to. Uh, there were only so many people to lift what we had to lift, and so we uh, kind of pick and chose what were the important things. And if we had more adult participation. Uh, we could do a lot more. I would say there is one critical need unless you fill the medic. Haven't filled the medic yet. So reaching your units, think about who has the right qualifications. What is the right qualifications? Uh, RN, EMT, Jess, do you remember the other one? Uh, doctor. <laughs> yeah, doctor. No, I mean, like, we didn't even take a dentist. <laughs> no, I mean, like, we, we, have, we have like PAs and doctors, but that no, doesn't not mean doctorate. That, 
that doesn't mean, different. No, I'm, that doesn't mean that they're wilderness medicine. And <laughs> and uh, wilderness first aid training. Uh, if there are people in your unit that can raise their hand and say, "I have a valid certificate," um, we are on the verge of in the wilderness. We are right on the on the time and distance edge there, but we do need a medic because Joan is going. I I can't believe she chose. What, a grandson's graduation or son's graduation instead of us? I mean, How yeah. dare she? Well, you know, it's like he's, he's only getting his master's. I mean, if it right. was a PhD, I could see yeah. it. So we do Obviously need a medic. Obviously, that's her priority. So if you've got a medic, um, like we said, RNs, doctors, dentists, wilderness, first responders. No. What? Yeah. Not enough. Yeah. Not enough. We do need a medic. So we just a, need a first aid, a troop to put on the first aid station and people just swing on through there. There you go. <laughs> Real time. So area. that's one. I'm working on water to see if I can get us something other than BYOW. Well, it, has anyone figured out who our contact at Camp Ariel is? Yeah, I, think, I got some stuff from Virginia. Yeah, Virginia oh. sent me some stuff about Camp Riley, so I'm going to reach out to them. Okay. That's on my homework I, list. I think the National Guard would probably be our, our best, best resource. Yeah. And if it was a trailer that they could park and leave so they don't have to hang around, otherwise, I'd be glad to feed them if they want to hang around. I figured that. I, would, I already truck. wrote a check that you were going to feed Dutch them. Dutch them Dutch out. The Dutch oven cook off of the judges. <laughs> yeah, right. right. So I think that's a couple there for that. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Hopefully, all your troops have rechartered. We know there's some that still have. I thought I was going to say, if I was going to put them on my mic hat, it would be charter. charter but probably everybody charter. sitting in this room has done it. <laughs> it's the, right. And no, then honestly, journey, journey to excellence paperwork. Half? Yeah. We're more than that. Two thirds? Yeah. I think the discount's still on. Well, National the, still hasn't fixed their pricing, so oh. get it in while you can. Well, yeah, and it is a. I hate to be that person, but it's a cease and desist on the 31st. Mm -hmm. You are no longer a troop, pack, crew, whatever, on the 31st. You're no longer insured either. And then uh, Journey to Excellence paperwork goes to Mike, not you. Is that correct? That should or, be correct. Okay. Yeah. It's got a spot for commissioner signature. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, and then obviously one of my favorites, Camp for All. Yes. So if you want to get in your donations, that's on the website you can get in something yet for 2023 if you want and the 2024 sites are open for pledges but we'll start having more information about camp for all in january I think. Did, yes did we ever figure so it used to be that you could do matching is that been repaired or is it still busted because it used to be that there was like some sort of 501c whatever thing where we could get matches on the donation link like map, but in past years that's not been. You're talking about a particular employer, or so well for me Intel, but I think it would depend on Intel. Is still no, yeah. yeah, no, because your your camp parole has to go to the actual council. And you can't route it through the unit. Right, there's no 501c yeah. that work with this. No, and, and it's it's an employer by employer thing on the whether they'll match your money or not. Some do, some don't. So you'll need to contact your individual employer and find out what they're. Some are very stringent. Yeah, some are very stringent. I wasn't sure that was the case, but yeah, yeah. some have like always worth asking. <laughs> they'll, they'll match a certain amount, and it really yeah. just depends. Yeah, you got to look at your individual employers. So, um, if you haven't seen an email from me about Camp for All, you will. I'm going to ask each unit individually. If they want to set a goal and what that goal is, um, I'll try to get a processor contact. If you have a specific person in your unit for Camp for All, um, I am in the middle of recording that. Uh, the expected minimum is about uh, $500 um, for setting a Camp for All goal. Um, right now on the website, it lists every unit at 500 and it'll just get updated as I collect those goals. So if you see a number online for 2024, and you don't like that number, <clears throat> reach out to me. Right, and if you leave it up to me, it'll be whatever you did last year times 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's the near term kind of stuff. Yep. All right. If you get a Camp for All donation in um, for 2024 before the end of this year, um, you qualify for that limited Go edition. Patch. Go see Patch. Yes. I already have one person that has submitted their pledge for that. <laughs> 
I haven't written it yet, but I intend to write a, a quick sheet of, for troops and packs about how to handle um, crossover logistically and my dot scouting. A lot of units get tripped up on that. So I'm going to try to distribute it to both the packs and the troops so that you can help. Oftentimes, the troops, it's kind of helpful for the troops to get them. Can, to the can I give packs. you another job? A how <laughs> to do it for then chiefs would also be appreciated. Because there's ways of adding den chiefs in so they get emails from packs. Oh, den chiefs is. In other words, I have a okay. scout, but they need to be in the pack yeah. to get email communication. Now, okay. I, this is not, not a crossover question. Separately, yeah, it's an opposite, like to know opposite how to deal with den chiefs. <laughs>